Hello everyone and welcome to PSGL here in Austria, here in the Red Bull Ring. What a beautiful circuit this is and the ability to have a fun and also aggressive race here is quite likely given the fact of the free DRS zones, the high slipstreaming and the high probability of overtaking. Also there's quite a high chance of a safety car round here as well. So I can already promise you this race is going to be pretty good. Especially for me on board that I can be having of drama as it unfolds during the session. But we're already on our first lap in Q3. What I decided to do is not show the highlights of Q1 and Q2. Because I want to keep the video completely action packed. And I feel it's unnecessary and it's wasting your time as a viewer to be watching laps in Q1 and Q2. I want to be giving you the best video possible. Full of action, full of drama. Not just making the video longer for ad revenue. So... We're already here in Q3. See, the first lap is actually done on worn tyres. You can see we're really pushing the limits of this tyre <laughs> compound right now. Sliding our close. way into the third sector. We're now coming through the second to last corner. Down to safety. gear. Kiss the curb on the inside. You've got a car on the inside. Luckily, it doesn't really distract us. Through the final corner. A bit wide. So we had to escape the throttle a little bit to avoid a track limit. But we do do a 4.1. Well, it was a pretty good banker being on the worn tyres. But now, final run in Q3. Jeez. Fresh air tyres, an opportunity to improve our lap time is critical here. We've got a grid full of F1 esports drivers. If you make a single mistake, they're going to pounce on your mistake and make you pay for it. So, as we're building up into the lap here, you see we get a beautiful exit. Open up DRS, come down to turn one, and you'll be open up the corner. Break on the left-hand side, on the curb. Break after the 100 meter board, down to fifth gear. Through turn one, you see we get a pretty good exit. We're up on the Delta, half a temp. Almost three quarters of a tenth already, and we are actually three quarters of a tenth up towards the end of the first set. This bit break on the curb on the left hand side, just around 70 meters down, down to third gear. So you run a bit wider, we see we get instantly back out of the lap because we know there's a better opportunity to prove. We're down to seventh place right now, but now this is crunch time. This is where it matters. This is where the lap has to be done. So coming down to turn one, again, looking to break on the left-hand side, break just after the 100-meter board, down to fifth gear. Rotate the car through on the power nicely. You see we get a pretty good exit, pretty similar to the exit we had before, slightly up in back. So we're going to be a tenth up at the end of the first set to split. Do not break too late like we did before. Break just before the fifth 70 meter board. Down to third gear. Rotate the car. Use a bit of the curb on the left hand side. It makes the car more stable on the traction. A tenth and a half up on the delta now. Critical flying down this downhill braking of turn four. Break just underneath the bottom. As you see, we actually lock up our front right, running a little bit wide, and that cost us about a tenth, tenth and a half as up. well. So, not been an ideal lap. So far, through the left hander, down to sip gear, rotate the car through, use a bit of the curb on the inside, snap the rover steer as we try to get on the power. Through the left hander, again, fully committed now because we've got to maximise the rest of this lap to make up the mistake that we've done. Coming down to the second to last corner, three temps up, down two gears. You can see we actually hooked this up pretty nicely now through the final corner. You see on the power, we get a huge snap of rover steer. What again is costing us around half a temp. So we realistically lost about a tenth, two tenths in this lap with the mistakes combined, but still P8 on the grid will turn into P9 eventually once everyone finishes their lap. So overall, I'm quite happy with this pace considering the mistakes that we made. Of course, it's better not to make these mistakes at all and be on P1, of course. Um, but like I say, because of the mistakes that we made, it was a fairly good result. As Thomas Ronhard goes to P1 with a 3.5. What an absolute stellar. Thomas is a mega talent. Definitely keep an eye out for him in the future. But as we're looking forward into the race, the strategy today will be a medium uh, and hard tyre or starting the hard tyre and going to the medium later. You can't really go on the soft tyres much in this game anymore because they overheat in the grade too fast. And as well with real life, the Q2 tyre um, rule has been removed. So no matter where you qualify on the grid now, you have free selection of tyre. You can see now though on the formation that we did pick the hard tyres to go for the first in the race in. And this is going to be an absolute critical Let's opening go. few laps and opening few corners as well. Because Austria, you have a big opportunity to make up places, but also a massive opportunity to lose places if you're not careful on the first few laps because it's all slow corners turn one is slow on the first lap turn three is slow turn four is slow what opportunity gives to people making lunges dive bombs and anything with an opportunity people will go for like i've mentioned earlier in this video this grid is stacked 
full of F1 Esports drivers and F1 Esports to be drivers. So any gap, any window, they're hungry. They will lunge it down the inside of you and make you punish for your mistake. But, you know, with all that being said, we all do like to have a bit of fun. And you can see I do the best grid lineup in PSGO history, performing a little 360 before going towards our grid slot. First time, probably last time as well, because I can't be doing that too much. Uh, but now we're going to be getting focused on the grid. Everyone is now lining up into their grid slots. We've got nice and warm rear tires from the 360. And you can see now the lights are coming on. One light, two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights, lights out. And away we go. You can see he actually pick up good initial traction. Frederick Rasmus to, to my right hand side. We're deploying battery, trying to go around the outside of him. Lucas to the inside of our Cortan, going to the brakes side. He's going around the outside of Frederick Rasmus, getting him on the power nice and early into the slipstream of the Williams. Deploying battery. Now, this is really where it's going to be critical with how you place your car. Look into the inside. No one's really defending. So now going to the inside, trying to go down the inside, but we back out of it. You can see. I think that was Jake Benham looking to the inside of us, but backing out of it sensibly. Now, on the DRS again, side by side with Caraton in the ERS. I mean, to say, not DRS, following him, tight in the slipstream. We've got to go down to the outside of the corner, around his outside. Lucas Blakey gets caught on the curb as well. So, actually, around the outside of two cars right now, up the inside of Lucas and Caraton into this left hander. All we have to do is make sure we get the breaking point spotted nicely in the sturdy air of our teammate. And we are safely up into P6. Caraton does try to have a little look back of us. But round the outside. We're going to space on the inside. But now that is position 6 confirmed. What a start that's been. From P9 to P6. Are we in P6? Initially going around the outside of two cars. And of course picking off Frederick at the start. So now we're in a good we position. We went around the outside of two cars. To now maintain our battery. Get into our tyre window. And really start to manage the stint. Building up for later and later in the race. Now turn one, make sure you nail it because of course everyone's hungry. We do do that, Caraton's following us quite closely. But now skipping forward on to lap seven. You can see Fabrizio just calling down his engine up ahead. We have recharged our battery all the way up into the 90% range. Lucas Blakely is up behind us, giving us a little bit of pressure, but I'm not too worried about uh, the pace that you can have at this moment in time because we're managing our battery, managing our tyres and being sensible. You see up ahead now, Kovitsa looks down the inside of Josh Ida who actually hits him. I almost hit my teammate as well uh, because, of course, he was stopped in the apex. So very little time for us to react. You can see Fabrizio actually giving DRS um, slipstream as well. Lucas having DRS to the car behind. You see defending from us what makes us very vulnerable to Lucas as well there. So I was a bit surprised by that because I would have thought that I would have been able to have the slipstream for my teammate. Uh, but Lucky was able to defend from Lucas anyway. But now skipping on to lap 19. And now the pit window is open. People are starting to box already. Now going into the pit lane. Make sure you stay within these white lines. Absolutely critical. Easy to pick up a 5 second penalty by doing so. Into the pit lane. Onto the limiter. Down into speed. And you can see instantly we get the turn in early thing. I think it was a glitch to be honest. Because... I don't remember pressing the button by mistake, um, so that was really unfortunate. So we're losing about a second in a pit stop window as well. So that's really going to criticise and hurt our race and criticise our ability to get a good result here because we lost a second and the grid is so stacked. You see, coming out of the pit lane, you can see one second would have put us ahead of Frederick, would have put us ahead of Josh Idru. So that's really put us in a bad position. So now we have to really focus to get our tyres warmed up. You can see I'm quite animated by my face cam because I was very upset about that. So your tyres are still cold, so running deep. And it's really difficult to get grip out of cold tyres in this game. It's very realistic, I would say, in that fact that cold tyres are not that grippy. Um, so now we have to focus to get these temperatures up. You can see we're falling out of DRS range of Josh Idle up ahead. So we have to send it into turn one to get a big snap of oversteer. As we do turn in, you get an instant free tackle penalty. What has been removed by the stewards post-race. So that will not be added to our total race time. So that is very fortunate there. As you can see up ahead now, everyone is fighting. You've got our battery back up to Go 52%. On, I don't want to crash if you hear, mate. And right Go now, on. we're playing the long game. Understanding there's a lot of cars up ahead of us and a lot of opportunity for them to fight. You see Caraton actually hitting for bits of Donoso. See, Donoso was actually flashing his battery as well. I don't want to press battery here. I just want to save it. You can see, Do something later in the race. You can see me saying, I'm not wanting to press my battery too much. I want to save it. You can see Fabrizio is flashing his battery. So, 
I would hope that we can work together as well um, and not hold each other up because I've had a really good opportunity to continue making my way forward in this race. I've got fresher tyres than a lot of the people up ahead of me and I think I've got more battery as well. 10 laps to go, 60% on the battery and we've got a very really good opportunity to make up more position. Of course, that three second penalty is going to be removed. Uh, so all we have to do is get nice and close to Fabrizio and make sure that we can overtake him. Then we can continue saving our battery later into the stint as well. You see coming out the final corner, they're pressing a lot of battery on the pitch shake. So we want to dispatch a Fabrizio as much as possible. You see he goes out of the slipstream, slightly defensive against us into turn one, through turn one again. And we can see we pick up a very nice exit, deploying battery down the straight. Why are you bothering to fight me with your battery? You can see he was depressing his battery. I was a bit surprised by that because we could have worked together. I could have saved a lot of my battery not having to press it all the way down the straight. Uh, but that's that's what happens, you know. That's just racing. You see up the inside, Fabrizio goes off the track. Um, so yeah, we were able to get the position. So not too much harm done to my race. We're back up to 43% with seven laps to go. You see, Nicholas Longe has... This race been... is going to... This race is going to be rather dramatised at the end, so I'm going to save battery now and go for the carnage at the end. You can see my live thoughts there coming true as Kautum gets pushed off the track by Nicholas Longe, and Nicholas Longe is in like fact that. going to get a penalty for that as well by the stewards post race. And you can see, I'm sorry for Kautum, he didn't really deserve that. I'd say I'm sorry for Kautum because he didn't deserve that. He was completely mugged off the track by Nicholas Longe there, but. We was able to take advantage of that, take use of the opportunity, moving forward into P8, but you can see we've got 70% battery. Josh Idu running wide, and you see we get a big slap of oversteer as we turn in off the curb. So I was a bit distracted by Josh there, so it was my mistake. Lap 34 of lap 36 now, coming down the straight. You can see everyone's fighting up ahead, and this is what I've been saving my battery for, is this opportunity building forward. You can see second to last lap of the race coming up out of turn one, and everyone stacked together. And you can see I'm choosing not to press my battery down this straight. We're going to be saving as much potential in this car for the final lap. You can see cars going side by side up ahead into turn three. Josh Idu actually takes out Barry Borman and Fred Rasmussen. So we're able to make up three positions in one corner, deploying your battery down the straight. And you can see now we are ahead of Barry as well up into P5 on the track position. See now through. The right hander, you can see now. What we need to do is stay nice and close. And that's to why you wait, game. chat. That's why you wait. And you can see I'm very hyped up about that triple overtake. I can't really call it an overtake. Triple opportunistic ability to make up three positions. Call it an overtake would be a bit cheesy as the cars were all off the track. Um, but you can see my critical factor here right now is Nicholas Longe not getting DRS to Jake Benham. If he does not get Jake, uh, Jake's DRS, we'll be able to overtake him fairly easily with our DRS. But I think he has now obtained DRS of Jake as well. So that's going to save Nicholas Longe's ability to defend for me on this lap. You can see we're deploying a lot of battery down the straight, closing up massively. But we know as well that Nicholas Longe is going to have a penalty for Caraton. So there's not really too much point in risking much stuff. You can see closing on the straight, deploying battery. If we can make an easy overtake, we will. Look into the inside, but you can see we back out of it. We're not really trying to go for anything too special. Um, because we know the risk is not really worth the reward seeing what happened to Caraton a few laps prior. So you can deploy the battery again. You can see just trying to make him go a bit defensive. See if we can fake anything. See if we can make him make a mistake. Going around his outside. But again, not really taking too much risk. Sort of backed out of that in the broken zone. Knowing that there really wasn't much. Time penalty easy. will be removed. Yep. And you can see me saying that my time penalty is going to be removed. So coming through the final scenes with corners. We're provisionally P5 on track through the left hander but we know for certain Nicholas Longe is going to be getting a penalty for what happened with Caraton so that's going to be another position that we make up as well unbeknown to us right now uh, Jake Benham will be getting a five second penalty as well for crossing the pit lane entry line so we're actually P3 in this race coming across the line you can see we do get moved up into P3 so that's a very nice race a very nice result to go forward with and of course a nice little podium i think this might be my first podium of the psgl season as well so very nice especially coming down from in like p10 after the pit stop window and having to overcome all those challenges in the race of course it's very critical in a race to stay calm mentally and try and make moves methodically and move forward and move forward again but i'm going to be having the spa highlights what's the next race in the psgl season coming up fairly soon i'm going to be getting back on 
the YouTube grind, so to speak, and uploading good content and informative content as that's the content that I want to make. I want to make content that is going to be helping you improve your ability as a driver and a human being and like. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. This has been the Austria Highlights with PSGL. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing night wherever you are. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and comment what you thought of the race as well. And until next video, have an amazing day. I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.